Hey everyone, welcome to this bonus episode of The Dark Parade. I'm Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Okay, so what is found footage fool? Well, aside from me, uh, that's Bo. Um... The idea is that I watch a lot of these found footage movies, and perhaps you are a fan, or perhaps you just want to hear somebody suffer. Either way, I think you'll enjoy this. These are probably not going to be very long, but here's what we're going to do. Because I watch a lot of these found footage movies, I want to impart the experience to you. Uh, I will warn you if there are spoilers, and in this case, yeah... I suppose there will be if you have an interest in seeing the film Behind the Sightings uh, from 2021, uh, this very year. Um, and the idea is that I'm going to try to stick to some criteria rather than just, you know, speak extemporaneously about the movie. Uh, and and uh, there will be many of these, I'm afraid to, to say uh, it shames me to, to tell you but that's true so there's five criteria that we are going to judge this movie on one uh, what's the reason for keeping the, the camera rolling okay is it a good one is it a bad one we're going to talk about that two what are the characters like are they good are they bad are they people you want to spend some time with uh, three the authenticity of the film is it a movie uh, in its found footage setting, does it uh, lend itself to some air of believability or, or reality? Um, then four, watchability, which is how easy is it to watch or is it just something that claws at the back of your eyeballs uh, like, like a, a bird with copper talons or something? And then finally, number five, scares. Is it scary? These are all horror movies that we'll be watching in the uh, found footage fool um in the, in, in that subgenre of uh, bonus episodes so let's get started behind the sightings is a movie in which uh this <laughs> it all right so it takes the premise that there were a bunch of sightings of creepy clowns which is true that is the thing that happened and the movie presumes, hey, there's probably something going on. More than just people dressing up like a clown. Like, it's not just something in the zeitgeist. It, it's something else. And so, behind the sightings, the title itself implies, hey, we are going to explain what is behind these sightings of creepy clowns. Does it do that? Well, uh, let's get into it. Um, look, criteria number one keeping the camera on is there a good reason to keep the camera on um no there is not for much of this the idea is that you have a couple who are going to investigate and the one of the i think it's the girl's mother is foot uh or is bankrolling them making this movie to investigate these creepy clowns. It's always been their dream, apparently, to investigate creepy clowns. And so now they're doing it. But once the creepy clowns of the, the movie start showing up uh, and they're running from them, then you know all the believability goes right out the window in terms of uh, why they're keeping the camera running. Um, and also clearly they would be running with the camera still held sort of chest or face high pointed in the right direction. It, it's nonsense. There are a handful of moments, of course, where they're trying to film this documentary makes perfect sense, but then it goes completely off the rails. There's a solid half of this where the camera should have been turned off. So no uh, rule number one, keeping the camera on or criteria number one, keeping the camera on uh, a total failure. Two, the characters in the movie. Are the characters any good? Um, so no shade being thrown at uh, the cast of this movie, um, which are uh, Jessica and Todd Smith. Um, and I assume they are friends of the director, Tony Cadwell. 
but who knows? At any rate, the, are they actors? I don't know. The presumption is that, hey, this is a married couple and, and we found this footage uh, of them investigating these creepy clowns. Perhaps they are married. If so, best, you know, mazel tov. <laughs> best, best to them. But they are incredibly unlikable characters in this. Uh, the the guy does wants nothing but to make this movie until he gets slightly scared and then he doesn't want to have anything to do with this anymore. The the girl seems very logical for the front end of it and then is entirely illogical in her pursuit of finishing this movie. It just, again, another thing, don't make no sense. Also, they're just always kind of screeching at each other and it's really unpleasant. Uh, it, it is not people like if you were trapped <laughs> with these people in a, in a minivan, if you were going on vacation with them, you just lose your mind. There is no way on, on hell or in God's green earth that you'd want to be stuck in a car with these people for any length of time. So characters failure there. We're zero for two so far. Number three, authenticity. This one is a little trickier because there is a world uh, that existed in 2016, right around the time it was coming out, surprisingly, that people were kind of excited by the idea of creepy clowns. And you did see news reports about clowns showing up uh, in the middle of nowhere, kind of spooking people. And there was, in fact, a statement from, uh, I think it was a, a some press conference where a press secretary for the president got asked about creepy clowns and they use some of that footage. So the authenticity portion of that is somewhat accurate. So there's something there and, but then you immediately go into, you know, the found footage stuff. And the first few scenes are people getting attacked by creepy clowns and then all the authenticity goes right out the window. So the movie establishes a strange reality and then immediately dispenses with it. It's a really terrible idea. So we're going to say mm, half a point for authenticity. Watchability, our fourth criteria, is this movie watchable? It's barely watchable. It is one of my least favorite forms of found footage, which is we're just going to point a camera at something and then run around and scream for a little while, coupled with another least favorite kind of found footage, which is we're just going to stick a camera in a, a, a set location, uh, essentially on a tripod, and then we're going to film somebody being tortured. And even though it doesn't get extreme, like this isn't hostile or anything like that, but it has a little tinge of that, and I don't think that really works. And like I said, the characters are unlikable too, so they're not pulling you along through the narrative. The story doesn't ultimately make much sense. It doesn't land at a conclusion for a movie entitled Behind the Sightings. It does nothing to suggest a reason why these people dressed up like creepy clowns are doing this, other than the fact that they're just doing it. And that they're malicious. So, mm, I don't know why the clowns are up to no good. Other than the fact that they're just mean clowns. But on a watchability level, uh, it's pretty thin. It, it was a tough sit, I gotta be honest with you. And then that brings us to our last criteria. Like, hey, all of that is fine if the movie is scary. So number five on our criteria list, is the movie scary? Mm, not really. Although I will give it some points, I will give it some points because there are moments in the film where you're filming somebody just run at you, and I there's something about that on a primitive level that I find kind of unsettling. And even in the early goings, there are a couple of moments or a couple of shots that I thought like, well, this all seems very silly, but also it's it's still kind of creepy because you you know it's at night and you're whipping a camera around and oh my god there's somebody in a clown mask there so there's something to that but unfortunately that's all the movie has up its sleeve 
It doesn't really do anything more than that. So if that doesn't get your goat, then you're not going to enjoy this. I can, I can fall for that gag a couple of times, but you're only going to get me with it those couple of times. And by the end of the movie, I really just wanted the whole thing to be done. It was tedious uh, and not very scary at all. Uh, at, at a point where in the movie, and clearly they were, uh, Mr. Cadwell was going for a bit of a Blair Witch vibe with having the character kind of go through this house uh, and then into the woods and so forth. And just not very, uh, very scary, unfortunately. So behind the sightings, a movie that on a scale of one to five, I would probably give about one and a half stars to. It's not the worst thing I ever saw, but boy. Uh, it, it certainly isn't even in the middle of the pack for most found footage films. So, uh, look, I, I wish nothing but the best to the cast and crew. Mr. Cadwell has a, another movie coming out this year, presumably, uh, called The Bamwell Haunting. Is that right? Balsam, A Paranormal Investigation is the name of it. Uh, starring Kane Hodder. So, you know, that's probably going to be pretty good. And <laughs> I, I, I kid, I kid Kane Hodder. I'm glad the man's getting work. But it looks to be another found footage kind of situation with uh, paranormal researchers going into a, a hotel. And uh, maybe, you know, there's no shortage of movies in which paranormal researchers go investigate something spooky. So we'll see how this one turns out. But if uh, behind the sightings is uh, any gay